Hello, thank you for joining Indivisible Berks as we give a voter registration training to volunteers that might be interested in helping us get more people in Berks County involved in the election process. First, I wanna talk about some important dates for voter registration. Our primary election is May 15th. So if someone wants to vote in that election, they must be registered by April 16th. So we're going to plan some voter registration activities between now and April 8th so that we can get all the paperwork turned in on time and to the election services office to help people get, get out to vote for the primary election. We're going to repeat that process starting in late summer and through to October 9th, which will be the last day to register for the general election. The big general election is going to be on November 6th. If you have any other questions about voting and, and dates that are important, visit the Office of County Election Services, County of Berks. The IP address is here at the bottom of the screen if you wanna take a second and write that down. Why do we want to participate in this process of registering voters? We want to do that because voting is such an important component of our country's democracy. It's a fundamental principle of indivisible Burks as well. We believe that every person should have a voice in the election. And even though it's a sacred right, something that's in the Constitution that is so important, the right to vote in our country is still dependent on your registration. And that registration process really still creates barriers for voting for many Americans. Some folks might not have internet. Some folks don't know where the city clerk's office is or don't know where they might be able to pick up forms. There's a multitude of reasons that they're blocked from registering to vote. Did you know that 57.7% of Americans with families of incomes less than $10,000 are registered to vote? That means maybe one out of two people in that low socioeconomic situation are registered to vote. In contrast, 85.7% of Americans with family incomes of over $150,000 are registered to vote. And another area, only 55.4% of 18 to 24 year olds are registered to vote. Again, only about one out of every two people is registered to vote. In contrast, people from 65 to 74, almost 80% of them are registered to vote. A lot of times young people and people in low socioeconomic situations feel like they don't have a voice. They don't register to vote. They think it's not for them. They don't have any rights. We want everyone to have a voice. And that's why we are taking registration to the voters. We're going to be primarily using paper forms. And why do we do that? There are a lot of tools online that will help people register to vote. But again, that requires a Wi-Fi connection. And some online tools require a voter to complete information, then they get sent a PDF in the mail to sign and they have to send it back. By using paper, we can assure that the voter completes the registration on the spot. There's no question we take out any, any barriers that might be in place for that registration. In Pennsylvania or in the United States, anyone who's been a citizen of the United States for at least one month before the next election is eligible to vote. If you have moved to Pennsylvania recently, or maybe you have moved to a new district, you must be a resident of that district for at least 30 days before the next election. 
in order to be eligible to vote. And of course, we all know that you have to be 18 years of age on or before the election. So if your birthday is on May 15th and you're going to be 18 years old, you can register now to vote. The only group that can't vote in Pennsylvania are people that are incarcerated for a felony offense. So only people currently incarcerated for felony offense cannot vote in Pennsylvania. If you were incarcerated for a felony and you were released from prison, you're no longer incarcerated, your right to vote has been returned. So you can now vote again. And if you're incarcerated for a misdemeanor, you can vote. You simply can't use the prison's address. You would either have to have your home address prior to incarceration, or you'd request an absentee ballot. So there's very few people in our state that are not eligible to vote. Once you register to vote, you are not required to register again unless you change your residence, change your name, or change your political party. If you don't do one of those three things, you don't have to register for the rest of your life again. It's important too that people know that if they fill out anything false on the registration application, it's considered perjury and it's punishable by law. So people need to be honest when they complete the application. When you register voters, you're going to explain to them that in Pennsylvania, we have a closed primary election. That means that during the primary election, the two major political parties, Democrats and Republicans, are voting for the people that will represent their parties in the general election. So if someone decides that they want to be independent or maybe they want to be in the Green Party or the Libertarian Party, they can make that choice. It is important that they do know that they will not be voting in the primary election. Many times, independents show up at the polls for the primaries not realizing that they don't get to vote at that time. And if someone moved into our state from another state, that might be new to them. Some states let everyone vote in the primaries. So when you do a registration, you'll explain that to people. They can be in any party, but they need to know that only Republicans and Democrats have a voice in the primary. You may not, under any circumstances, persuade someone to register for a specific party. Voter registration must be completely nonpartisan. So that's very important as well. You don't want to make anyone feel as though they have to be in a specific party. And sometimes people don't know the differences between political parties. My recommendation would be that you not get into an ideological discussion about the parties. You can maybe ask them if there's a, a politician that they know, that they're familiar with, and then you can tell them if that person is a member of a Republican Party or a Democratic Party or an Independent Party, and let them get a feel for what that means for them. But I would not get into an ideological discussion about the parties. So the people that should complete the voter registration form will be individuals that have never voted before, people who are changing their name or just change their name, change their address, or want to change their party affiliation. Sometimes college students will want to vote at college. If they are a Pennsylvania resident, 
that's going to school away from their hometown, they may register to vote in the voting district where they are attending school. So to give you an example, if someone is from Philadelphia and they're going to school at Albright College and they want to vote in Reading, they can do that. They have to change their address on their voter registration. Once they do that, they can vote in their local district here at college. If they're an out of state student, they don't have the opportunity to do that, but PA residents can register to vote where they're attending school. People sometimes ask, will I have to have an ID to vote? And the answer is, if they have just filled out a registration, then the answer is yes. If you are voting for the first time, or you've had a name change, or you've had an address change, you must show ID when you go to the polls. That ID doesn't have to be photo ID. There's some examples here of photo ID that's acceptable, but there's also non-photo IDs that are acceptable. So typically people might have a driver's license or a passport, a student ID or an employee ID. Those things are all acceptable photo ID. But if, it, if an individual doesn't have any ID with a photo on it, they can bring a paycheck, a utility bill, bank statement, some other form that would identify who they are. If you're not going to be able to vote in the primary election or the general election, you can apply for an absentee ballot. If you have an absentee ballot in Pennsylvania, you have to provide a valid excuse for why you're not going to be able to make it to the polls on the day that it's been designated by the state. And here are some examples of reasons that they consider valid excuses. When we come back to that college student, he's on the list there. If he wants to vote in his hometown, he has to do an absentee ballot. If you know you're going to go into the hospital for surgery or you're going to be shipped out on military duty, then you want to do an absentee ballot. So this is what the registration application looks like. All sections on this form are going to be completed. When you're talking to a potential voter, you're going to review the form with them, ask them if they understand everything, and then you are going to let them fill it out. You will not fill it out for them. That would be considered voter fraud. You must let them fill it out. Question one is pretty basic. They need to print their name. You wanna tell them they need to print their name legibly so that it can be read and transcribed. And number two are the really important questions. Are you a citizen of the United States and will you be 18 years or older on or before election day? If you answer no to either of those questions, then you can't fill out the application. You might as well stop there. But if you answer yes to both of those questions, then you go to number three and talk about the reason. Is this a new registration? Are you changing your party, your name, your address? Check the box that pertains. And then number four is a little demographic information, birth date, phone, sex, email. Not everyone has email, but if they do, they can include it. Number five, you assume is pretty self-explanatory, but it can be tricky. People will know their address and it can't be a PO box. It must be a street address because they use the address to determine the precinct that the individual is going to be voting in. The part that might be tricky for a lot of people is municipality. A lot of people don't know what their municipality is. Sometimes you can ask them, who do you pay your local taxes to? Many people will know the answer to that question. 
and that is likely the municipality. I live in Morgantown, but my township is Robinson. That's who I pay my local taxes to. They're my municipality. You might have an address that's Reading, but you live in Exeter. Exeter is your municipality. So that gets a little tricky for people. If they don't know their municipality, it is okay to leave that blank. For question number six, if you get your mail at the same address that you just filled number five at, you just check your little box, same as above. But if you actually use a P.O. box, this is where you're going to write that P.O. box number so that you'll be sure to get your voter registration card when it comes in the mail. For number seven, you're going to incur encourage the use of the PA driver's license if an individual has a driver's license. Sometimes people will have a PA ID that they get from the DMV even though they don't drive. If they have one of them instead, that would be perfect. If they don't have either of those and they know their social security number, they can put their last four digits of their social security number here. One of the challenges we might find with the younger voters when they register, especially if they live in the city, they might not drive. So they might not have a driver's license because they use public transportation in the city. And if they haven't started applying for college, they might not know their social security number. So this section, we might find some challenges for the youth voters. We're going to try to get messages out to the local school representatives to let them know that the kids need to know to have that information if they wanna to register to vote. So number eight is where you're going to explain the closed primary process in Pennsylvania, and then let people determine if they want to be Democratic, Republican, Green, Libertarian, or if they don't wanna be in any party. They want none. They wanna be independent. That's their decision to make. And for number nine, you will complete that section only if the voter is going to need help at the poll on election day. We will have applications that are written in Spanish. An individual might need Spanish instruction at the voting poll. And if that's the case, you might check that. They can check number nine, saying that they're going to need to have a Spanish-speaking individual at the poll to support their voting. There could be someone with a visual impairment that might need some support. There could be some physical impairments that would require support. This is where they're going to let them know so that they can be prepared at the polls to provide support. Number 10 is the section for people that have changed their name or their address. If someone is registering for the first time, obviously they skip number 10. But if someone is registering because they've changed the name or address, they're gonna complete the section. And then when we get down here to question number 11, the declaration, make sure the people know that they have to sign within this box. It's important that their name not be scrawled across the whole page. Keep it within the box. And they're going to print their name legibly down below and put the date. Remember when I said to you it's important that you review the form with people and then step back and let them complete it themselves? If there is some reason that a person is not able to complete it themselves and they need assistance, the name of the person that assisted them needs to be put here. You don't want to participate in filling out a form for someone unless they really have a challenge that makes it impossible for them to fill it out by themselves. I recommend that you step back and let them complete the form on their own after you've explained it to them. What are you going to do with the form? Well, 
if you're working at a canvassing event, you're likely going to be with a team of people and you're going to give the material back to the team captain. If you happen to be the captain, you can contact me and we'll make arrangements for me to pick up the applications and I will take them to the Burke Selection Services. Or if you're comfortable and know what you're doing and you're the team captain, you can take them to the election services for us. It's important that we get them to election services in a very timely fashion. If we have a weekend canvassing event, I would want to have the applications by Sunday night and Monday I would take them to the election services. That's how quickly we'd like to turn them over and we like to take them into the election services in batches so that they don't get swamped with a hundred new applications at one time. I'm thinking positive that we'll get a hundred new applications. People can register online and it really is very simple. The exact form that we just reviewed is available online at votespa.com. You might want to write this down or bookmark it, especially maybe on your cell phone. Under the register to vote tab, you're going to find this exact application. An individual would fill it out and submit that information. They're registered to vote. So if you find yourself without paper applications, you can pull out your phone and someone can go through the process on the technology. So what are we gonna do? We are going to go out and try to find some high traffic canvassing areas where we can have conversations with passerbys. We're going to say hello to virtually every person that walks past us. Hi, are you registered to vote? Have you moved? Has your name changed? Do you need to update your registration? People generally are very polite and they'll let you know, yes, they're registered or it's interesting because sometimes people will say, wow, yeah, I did move. And they forget that they have to still have new application if they want to vote in the election. So they seem to appreciate it. You run into a lot of great people. We can do targeted knocking on doors. If we can, we should be able to get information of people in your neighborhood that are not registered to vote, that you could knock on their doors and ask them if they'd be interested in registering to vote. Or maybe you're in college, maybe you're taking some classes, or maybe you uh, are attending church or you're going to another group event. You can register people there. Honestly, when you're eating lunch in a restaurant, you can ask the waitress, are you registered to vote? If she's between the ages of 18 and 24, you've got a 50% chance that she is not registered to vote and you can hook her up. Don't be afraid to ask people. We wanna see as many people involved in the process as possible. We do have some events coming up, but we also need your help. If you are aware of a location where you think it would be a great place for us to put a couple of volunteers with clipboards and voter registration applications, contact us, let us know. Maybe you own a business, maybe you own a restaurant, maybe you have a stand at a, at a flea market, maybe you think it would be a good place to put voter registration. Let's talk about it. Let's see if we can get some volunteers together and send them out to a location. Farmers markets, festivals, strip malls, pride events, candidate rallies are great places. College campuses are terrific places to do voter registration. So if you think of something, share it. Then we can try to move on it. We have a very short window right now but we're going to be registering people all the way up until the general election in November. So think about places. Here's some Canvas opportunities we have coming up right now. 
On March 24th, we are going to participate in the March for Our Lives event in Reading, and we're going to be doing voter registration there. We're looking for volunteers, people that would be willing to support that activity. If you are interested, please contact me. I should have my email address here, just debbie.noel, N-O-E-L, at indivisibleburks.com. You can go on the Indivisible Burks website and just click the info email, and that will get to me as well. We also have Redner's Market in Kenhorst has allowed us to come to their facility on Saturday, April 7th, and Sunday, April 8th. If you are willing or interested in working for a couple of hours at one of those events, let me know. We're only there from nine to one, just four hours. If you wanna come do an hour or two hours, it would be greatly appreciated. Same thing on April 8th, from 11 until three, if you wanna do one hour or two hours, let me know. We're always looking for volunteers. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation and go through the process for voter registration. We really want to get people involved. We want you to get involved and we want voters to get involved. So reach out, let us know if you're willing to help. We'd be happy to add you to our list of volunteers. Thank you. <laughs>